Hello everybody, Mr. Stixman here, and welcome back to Stormworks. In today's video, we are going to paint the Alpha Z. It should give it a bit more life, a bit more character, and hopefully it will end up looking more like the real version. Let's get started. Okay, now the first thing we're going to paint onto this boat are the cleats. Now cleats are basically what you'd attach ropes to so you can, you know, moor it up against something, dock it to, uh, you know, a pontoon or a jetty or whatever. Um, and this boat has actually got quite a lot of them, but they're really designed in an interesting way here because they're actually completely flat with the, the deck, alright? And then to raise them up out of the deck, you basically press them in and then it will pop up out of the deck and then you can tie rope around it. So um, when you're not actually tying things up to a cleat, they don't really get in the way, you can't trip over them and the design will look a bit more streamlined. But yeah, let's see if we can now paint some of them in. We're not going to be able to put all of them on because we do need the paintable sign here to actually paint them in. Um, and these are wedges. Now some of them are meant to go along the edge of the boat, but these are two by one wedges and we just can't paint them uh, with enough detail, unfortunately. Maybe in the future we'll get these paintable signs in wedge shapes as well. And then we can always upgrade it, but just for now we'll do what we can. So to begin with, there's a couple of cleats here right next to each other. And if I just grab that back and we'll chuck this over here like that. And there's also one right on the bow or near the bow up here as well. There we go. So we've got those three. There's also going to be another two back here as well. And I'm going to put them, I think I'm going to put them there actually. That's probably the best idea. All right, so now let's fill them in. And the quickest way to fill in these paintable signs is to go to replace color. Well, I find this is the quickest way anyway. Then select the color you want and just click on both the black and the white squares and it changes them all very, very quickly. Also, of course, you could just do one block and then copy and paste it um, and get the same result every time. That's also another option. Um, but if you've just got a few placed down like this, uh, it really helps like that. And also they don't really work in symmetry mode, unfortunately. So that's why, you know, I'm going to have to do these separately or just copy and paste them over. Now, these cleats here are, they look like stainless steel, okay? So they're going to be very, very shiny. Um, and that's why in the middle, I'm going to paint a white square like, oh, is that the middle? Like that. Okay, and then around the outside, because they're actually a little bit bigger than this probably, and if we just left them like that, they'd probably look a bit too small if we just take the uh, the grid off and everything there. Yeah, <laughs> they look quite small, don't they? So, I don't know, maybe that's good. But what I thought we could do is actually paint a bit of silver, well, not silver, but grey, darker grey, just around the edge. And that might help them to just stand out a bit. There we go. Okay, so that's those done, but there's a couple at the back as well, so let's just head over here and do the same. Um, these ones I'm actually going to put further into the corner, I think, like this. There we go, and then I'll just do the same on the other side, like that. If we now remove the grid and the arrows, we can see, yeah, like I don't know if it's better to have just the white square in the middle or just to have the grey border around as well but look they're much more visible like that you know compared to uh, having them much smaller so we'll leave it like that for now and yeah the only other ones on the actual boat are sort of down the sides here because of course you've got one midships so that you can you know uh, tie ropes up from the centre of the boat and uh, you know you can call them springs actually the ones that you attach there I think um, but yeah, we unfortunately we just can't paint them there for now. Now we're going to have a look at the seats here at the back, the passenger seats, okay? Because what there is, is a sort of um, a strip, a darker strip, which goes around the back of the seat. And I guess it sort of covers up the seal between, you know, the leather and the actual wood itself and kind of separates them a bit. So that's what we're going to do next. And therefore, we're going to change all of these into paintable signs as well. Right, okay, now that's done, what we're going to do is find a good uh, colour or shade for that trim around the seat. So I'm going to go for the dark grey here, and we'll just draw a line all the way along. Oh, I can't do that very well, can I? There we go. 
and then here it's actually going to sort of curve around a bit and what I've done I've actually made a mistake here so also I'm going to replace the color with the seat leather color as well on either side okay and then we're going to draw a line uh, for the trim to go and curve around here so you've actually got a curve instead of just a uh, sort of a, a straight line Right, there we go. So now we've got a bit of a curve which goes around the back of the seat there um, and it joins up to what is actually this strip here which goes underneath. And again, I would use uh, paintable signs for this bit as well because it's a bit thinner, but you just can't really do that. Oh, hang on. i got to get rid of that. <laughs> um, yeah, because these are the backs of wedges and again, we just can't paint them in the fine detail, unfortunately. All right, now we'll just uh, replicate that on the other side as well. And there we have it. So that simple small change there has made a big difference actually, I think, hasn't it? It's made a massive difference to how they look already. Now, we did try to add a real engine cover last time, didn't we? Uh, but it didn't quite work uh, for various different reasons, including weight and all the rest of it. So what I'm going to actually do is draw it on. Now, although it won't work, it actually will look a lot more like the real Alpha Z uh, by doing this, okay? So that's a really good thing about it. Uh, and also also, we're going to draw some sort of uh, ventilation lines at the back here as well. Okay, so that's another thing we're going to do afterwards. Now, what we're essentially drawing in this case is the line um, or the gap in between the hatch or the engine cover and the main deck or, you know, sort of body of the boat itself. So it's going to be a sort of shaded area, the gap in between them. And so what we're going to do is find a darker brown, okay, and we're going to use that to paint it on. Because if we just paint it with the dark grey here, I mean, it might actually work quite well. We will have to change those to paintable signs. Um, but it might be a bit too aggressive and it might stand out and look a bit too cold cartoony you know so we're going to go for a more subtle approach here um, and I will have to actually change a lot of these into paintable blocks as well so we might as well just do that and we won't have to use all of them of course but what I might do is just put a whole bunch down and then we can always you know delete them later on right so if we just sort of stick with this for now and make them all paintable blocks Okay, so we've done that. Now let's find a darker brown that we might be able to use. And to do that, I'm going to start off with the colour that we've already got here as a baseline, okay? Then I'm going to find out which way, you know, which slider we can use to sort of just darken it but maintain a similar colour. Because at the end of the day, we're still, you know, painting the same type of wood exactly. It's just that we're sort of painting the shadowy gap in between them. So... We just bring it that way a bit let's test this um we'll just see if i select that for a minute okay so that's quite a good option i reckon and the cool thing is as well that what we can do is just paint the whole thing and then we can just adjust it really really quickly on the fly if we need to so it doesn't matter if we paint it in you know slightly the wrong sort of brown actually that might be okay let's just try this for a minute Yeah, I actually, I think that's quite good, you know. I mean, I'd make it even thinner if we could, but that's just not really possible. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to stick with this and we'll do the whole thing. Um, and yeah, I, I reckon, I do reckon it'll look pretty good in the end. All right. Now the shape here is a, is a really nice shape, actually. I really like it. And that's one thing we definitely wouldn't be able to achieve by building the hatch as an actual hatch that works. Um, but yeah, we can get really fine detail for the shape here. So... To make sure we've got that brown selected now down the bottom here it sort of ends around there okay so we're going to cover i reckon we'll cover three blocks here like that let's have a look without the lines on okay so that's our that's the bottom of the the hatch okay the engine cover that's going to go maybe just a little bit wider all right and now what we want to do is try and it sort of goes in a v shape from around here and it cuts down in a v-shape either side obviously it's symmetrical okay so i'm going to start down here rather than up there and then we'll see if we can join on these uh, these lines when i've done the curve 
So I'm just trying to gradually increase this. And that's it, that's joining up. Now how is that? That's good. Okay, I reckon that actually looks quite like the, uh, the actual boat. I'll just mimic it on the other side and then, uh, yeah, and then we'll have a look. And that's done, look at that. I quite like that actually. Now I'm pleased with the uh, the shade of brown there because it just doesn't stand out too much, but you can definitely notice it. So yeah, I think if it was like the dark gray, see how much stronger that is. And I, yeah, I just reckon that would look a bit too cartoony. Um, it's fine here, of course, on the back of the seats. I think that's really, really good. But here, that is definitely definitely what I'm aiming for. Okay, so we'll leave it like that. Now the next thing to do is actually uh, there's some ventilation sort of slits into the back here into the stern. Okay, so I'm going to now add those in as well using the same brown shade that we have over here. Because unlike with this ventilation here, uh, the ones at the back, they don't actually have any stainless steel sort of fittings around them. So these are meant to be quite shiny, you know, metallic, shiny. Uh, but this back here, they're just literally holes in the boat, essentially. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Uh, and that's why we're going to use the brown over here. Also, I don't have to paint anything else inside this area right now, I don't think. So I am going to change these back. Uh, some of these just into ordinary blocks here because we just won't need those. Is that that's not the right brown, is it? <laughs> Let's get the right brown out. That's better. Uh, we also don't need these ones over here as well. That is now done, and next we're going to actually bring a few more paintable signs in at uh, towards the stern, I think. So maybe just one more layer of them, I reckon. That's probably good for now. Now we are ready to put the ventilation in. Um, and I think, I mean, it kind of sits a bit behind or, you know, the uh, the hatch here. So if we just leave a whole block potentially um, and we'll get the, make sure we've got the right tool. Yep, that's all good. So I'm just going to start it. One, two, three, maybe down here. Now what happens is they are actually curved, okay? All three of these uh, sort of slits here are curved. So they're gonna curve up and I might need to use something in these blocks here as well in a minute. That's why I've got those there. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. Actually, I am going to bring it slightly higher up, I reckon. There we go, that's our first line. Yeah, really nice. I'm quite happy with that. Now what we're gonna do is put the other two in below it. They're actually slightly uh, sort of smaller or they're not as long essentially. And again, it creates that V shape that we've got going all the way across the boat. So these lines are coming in here and then it follows down here. Uh, and again, that's why the, you know, if, if these uh, sort of lines are cut in a bit, that's still following the same V shape down there. All right, so basically what I might do is uh, replicate the same shape but just start it one block in uh, so let's see one two let's have it down three blocks here like this and then yeah instead of it going in there it's gonna go in there instead if that makes any sense <laughs> uh, yeah that's good now we're just going down another three one one two three and then we'll start the other line down here and again, let's bring it along so it's one block shorter on either end, just like that. And then all we have to do, whoops, <laughs> is uh, copy the same thing. And there we have it, look at that. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty good actually. I quite like it. Let me know what you think guys, by the way, in the comments, um, you know, if you're a fan of that. But it's, it is actually quite good. Now. Because we don't have a lot of detail on the deck in general, yes, it does stand out a bit. Um, there's not a lot we can do about that. And if these wedges were paintable with as much detail as the signs here on the side, then, you know, I'd actually do some proper wooden texture all over this thing and it would probably look incredible. However, if I did the textured surface, you know, just on the top flat bit here, it might look really good on its own, but over the whole boat, it'd just be really, really mismatched. And it would probably look really bad <laughs> just because it wouldn't be sort of so consistent. 
Um, so yeah, that, that's good. I mean, let's spawn it in, shall we? I think I'm in the hangar at the moment. But let's spawn it in and actually have a look, because that's when you get a real idea of, you know, what it looks like. That's fantastic. I'm really, I'm a big fan of that, actually. And these things, these cleats here look pretty good as well. All right, the seats are looking good. All right then, now next, we are going to paint the flooring down here. There is a metallic floor. It might be aluminium, I suppose, but it's textured, okay? So it's obviously not colored, but it's kind of shiny and it's textured as well. So we are now gonna try and paint in that textured feel for it, okay? And it should really transform the interior or this sort of area of the boat. Let's go. I think a really good idea would be to actually lift up the seats first so that they're out of the way. Now, what are we actually taking here? Okay, we're taking some of the window with us. <laughs> Never mind. I think it's all all right. We'll just put it back afterwards. There we go. Paste that up there. Then we'll grab the other seat and just chuck it in. Doesn't really matter, but we'll put them at the same height. That's it. Okay, now look at that. We've got lots of space to work with and already it looks quite plain actually, doesn't it? Are these different colours? Yeah, they are different colours as well. Okay, that's a bit strange, isn't it? I'm not sure what colour I'm meant to have here, but anyway, I guess we can leave it this darker shade. I'm not really sure. Yeah, in fact, the other side was already correct. So, yeah, that's all good. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. It's just a, a slightly different brown because it's actually wood, isn't it, of course? So it's different to the seat colour. All right, that's all sorted. Now, what I'm going to do here then is turn all of the floor blocks into paintable signs. And I should actually be doing this in symmetry mode. And then we should be able to paint every single area of the floor that we want to. Okay, so that's done. And now what we want to do is find a couple of sort of metallic uh, colors and shades and things to go on it. Okay, so I'm going to find a base color. And also we do have some stainless steel strips that actually go along the, the edges of the seats and here and on either side as well. They Again, they're sort of a, a, a seal probably in between the flooring uh, and the wood and that sort of thing. I think to highlight the textures, what I'm going to do is similar to how I made the cleats as well, because uh, the, the textured floor is going to be a bit more bright and shiny um, on the sort of top of the texture and then a bit darker down at the bottom of the texture, right? Um, that, that's because they'll be uh, slightly in shadow, I'm sort of thinking there. So if we use the whites here um, for the shiny bits, <laughs> if you like, uh, and then we'll just go for a bit of a darker grey underneath that, all right? I reckon this grey here is actually a bit too dark, all right, because we don't want it to be the same as other greys on the boat. And also, it is quite shiny, especially when light reflects off it. You know, it's really quite a light looking uh, metal there. So if we go to white, OK, and then all of these sliders are at 255 here. So if we just bring them back a bit, um, I don't know, let's just try 230, for example, and just test it out and see how that looks. That's it, that's 230. So that's a nice light grey there, but it's still different. Um, slightly shaded. That's very good. Yeah, if we just do that, we'll do one block and then we'll actually, you know, copy and paste it all over the place. Um, and then we'll draw the strips in after that. Now, if we put white on here as well. OK, so they are visible, look, but only just, which is really nice. I think that's really good. And now that works, I think, you know, these are good choices here to use. Now we've got to figure out a sort of a texture that we can paint on to make it look like it's a grippy surface. Because the idea is, of course, that um, you can walk over it when it's wet and hopefully not slip over it. <laughs> you know, uh, so that's the idea. So maybe we'll just try, you know, copying that like that down there. OK, that's pretty good. And then maybe in the middle here, we'll just put it a level up. So it looks like it's a bit more different, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And then we'll go back down again. Yeah, I like that. I think that's correct. Yeah, that's good. Look at that. All right, I, I like that. And the idea is, of course, that, you know, close up, I mean, it will look a bit sort of weird. But from a normal distance, that actually probably looks quite good because you're not meant to notice it. You just sort of see it in the background and it just works, hopefully. So yeah, now I guess what we could do is copy and paste it, right? And just put it all over the place 
and see if it works. That looks pretty good, in my opinion. I do like it, you know? I'm gonna spawn it in and just have a look, but I, I think that's actually not bad. Um, we'll jump on the bow here and take a look. Yeah, that really gives me a, a sort of a metallic feel when I look at that. Yeah, that's great. Okay then, so now let's just copy that whole thing and put it onto the other side. Um, and by the way guys, uh, if I do anything and I forget to sort of explain how I'm doing it, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to, uh, you know, to go over that. But I'll just explain how I'm doing this copy and pasting. So use the selection grid tool up here, okay. And then basically uh, you sort of, if you control click, you can highlight or select one block, okay. So that is now selected. And if that was what you wanted to copy or paste or cut or whatever, then you could just use the tools here, cut, move and copy. And then if you wanted to extend that um, grid to select even more blocks, you can do it two different ways. You can either click resize grid and extend it like this, which is very, very easy. Um, or you can actually hold shift and then, you know, it's going to show you in green here which blocks you're about to select. And then you just click and it will select all of those for you very quickly. Okay, then you can, you can always extend it. And then if you want to see, I've made a mistake there. So then you go to resize grid and you just make the grid a bit smaller. So we're not selecting blocks that we don't want to. All right. Okay, but I think I've actually selected everything that I need to. So uh, I'm going to click copy now and just literally drag it over and then paste it in. And then finally, of course, we have to merge it because if we don't merge it with this merge tool up here, it's just going to fall out of the boat, <laughs> essentially because it's not connected to anything. So we're going to use the merge and just click on the, the body and then the other body that we want to merge it to like that. And it's all done exactly the same on both sides. Fantastic. Now, before we put the seats back in, um, there are some metallic strips, as I say, which kind of go around this area um, and, you know, past this draining board as well um, and just seal things up and connect things together. So I'm going to go for, let's just try this grey here. Um, yeah, that's good because it's a bit darker. Now, even though this is a really shiny surface, it is uh, most likely stainless steel, um, these strips here. They look a bit darker because, of course, they're reflecting things in a shadowed area so they are you know we don't have any shiny surfaces unfortunately or reflective surfaces in the game at the moment uh, really so yeah I'm gonna use a darker strip here just a bit more of a dark gray and I guess here we're gonna to have to have a bit of a zigzag like that I mean I don't think there's any better way of doing that to be honest chances are we're not even gonna see this bit anyway because of course it's right down underneath us we won't even notice that. There we go. And that's done. But of course now it doesn't actually use symmetry mode though. So I'm actually going to just paint it over on the other side as well. Done! Fantastic! I really like that. Yep, I really, really do like that a lot. Okay, let's put the seats back down then. Now, are those windows matching up? Yep, they are. Perfect. We'll paste them in and then just use the merge tool again. There we go. All back to normal. And if you cut and paste, it does actually maintain all of the connections in the component you're cutting and pasting. Um, or it should do. Yeah, there we go. So it's all still connected up. We haven't lost any connections. I think sometimes if you use the copy tool, it might actually lose some of your connections. So just bear that in mind. I can't remember if that's the case, but I think it has happened to me before. So uh, yeah, just uh, consider that before you start copying things around. But now the seats are back in. That is, that's much better, isn't it? Look at that extra detail. That's really good. Yeah, that's really nice, isn't it? I, I think that's really good actually and it's quite uh, a good it's a light color which I think is quite accurate you, you can actually I have seen different versions of this boat some of the versions have got like different uh, materials um, different technology in as well but they're all you know pretty similar um, there's also a, a bigger version of this boat called the Victoria Z as well um, which is a, a, just a bit longer um, but they are very, very similar, and that's why you know we might find a few different examples on the web. 
but I'm very happy to keep that as it is. Now there is a detail back here between the seats that I'm going to add next and we're actually almost there for this episode to be honest. Um, but back here, now I'm not sure exactly what it is, it looks a bit like a place where you can refill the fuel tanks. Which would kind of make sense because the fuel tanks are actually down the sides here and I can't see any other location to potentially put a fuel nozzle in or a funnel and you know fill it up. But yeah there's this metal uh, sort of disc here in between the seats and if we just make this a paintable sign here as well, we'll make sure we've got the right colour there. That's it and we can just draw it on I suppose. There is also, now these seats, of course, they do have more detail in reality. There's some lines and sort of various different things around them. Um, but because most of these blocks are not paintable signs, they just can't be because they're wedges and pyramids and all that. We just can't paint them. So it's better to leave them all plain rather than just paint some of them and it will look really patchy and mismatched. So that's why I'm actually not going to be able to paint these right now. Like if they add more shapes of the paintable sign in the future, again, I will go over not only the seats here, but actually the uh, the, the hull and the deck and everything as well. And we just try and increase that detail depending on what they might add. But here is a place where we can actually do something about it. Okay, now I think for this disc here, which might be a filler cap of some kind, um, I'm going to literally do what I've got for the cleats as well. Because it's that kind of, you know, appearance. So we'll just put that on here. Okay. And then um, there's actually a line, a very, very faint line, where the leather kind of joins together. I think it might be two different separate pieces of leather, which are sort of pulled together and stitched up. So it, you know, kind of seals the gap again. And if we just take this leather colour here and then make it a little bit darker. So let's try backing that off a bit like that maybe let's try that okay that's almost there really isn't it yeah really really subtle that's good that's all I want to do there so you can hardly notice it it's an extra extra bit of detail in the background there it's really coming together quite nicely now isn't it all these extra details I just remembered actually that I've had a suggestion to change this rudder up a bit. Now it's not going to really be any different as such, however there is a version of this hinge which doesn't have the portholes at the back, so it's a much cleaner look. So let's go and find it and that is called the uh, robotic door hinge. If you have a look here you can see that uh, the, the robotic hinge that we are using right now has got the holes but this one doesn't. Now they are slightly different, so uh, this one has got uh, bigger sort of sides to it, okay, it looks a little bit more substantial, but otherwise uh, it's a much cleaner look, and so yeah, let's use it. There we are, it looks much better now, doesn't it? Of course we will have to just merge it together and make sure that it's got power and all the rest of it. And we'll give it a quick test to make sure it turns in the right direction as well. There we go. Look at that. Really, really nice. Really nice. Awesome. And we're almost there now for this video. But there's a couple more things that I might want to add down here at the back. Now, of course, we're rarely going to actually have a look down here. But we can add some details. And it might just because it's quite plain at the moment, isn't it? And it might just, you know, add to the overall feel of this thing. I'm going to delete that block, that block, and that block, and then the same on the other side, I think. Yeah, like that. Okay, and then we'll replace them with paintable signs. Okay, that's done. Now, let's just take off the blue edges there. So, what we're going to do is curve this around so it looks, it, it literally is a curve on the real boat. Okay, that's much better already. Okay, then there's a couple of bolts up here as well. So if we just grab a dark grey perhaps, we'll just do that. A bit lighter than that. Yeah, there we go. Same on the other side. Okay, so there's our couple of bolts there. And then finally there are a couple of, uh, I think, I don't know what they are, maybe brackets or something. They're quite thin, they're not very big. Um, but they're over in this area. So I think what we'll find here is probably, we just go for like this for example, they literally just look like that on the sides.
and there we have it. Just a bit of extra detail. I'm not sure. I might add more at another time. Um, but yeah, that's a bit closer again to the original Alpha Z. Okay, everybody, that's it for this video then. So we've added quite a bit of detail here. I'm pretty happy with that. We might add more in the future, of course. Um, these things are never finished, are they? <laughs> but uh, certainly, I think it looks much better than it did uh, before at the start of this video. If you've got any suggestions, do let me know, of course. Modular engines are coming to the game next week, as of the recording of this video. It's about five days away, I think. So, yeah, that's very exciting. And I may well be adding a modular engine into this boat. I'll probably have to do some practice first and really learn the ins and outs of it all before I install one into this boat. But, yeah, I'd like to do that anyway. Um, and, and we'll see how that goes. But they should be more powerful, more efficient, hopefully a bit smaller as well. Be really customizable it will look better and yeah i'm very very excited about that indeed so there is still work we can do for the alpha z right here and also i am always thinking about you know what other sorts of build series i can do in the future as well different vehicles um, boats are my favorite but i do like other kinds of vehicles as well so we'll, we'll see how that goes but thank you so much for watching everybody take care and i'll see you next time bye guys <laughs>